look, look through here and see if you can see me here. It's taken. Don't say that. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It is definitely a pleasure to be with you all this evening, and I want to thank um, Mr. David Murphy. I want to thank you, Miss Murphy. I want to thank you, Miss Fran Adam uh, um, Allen, uh, my great, awesome superstar brother, um, Dempsey Murphy, and I want to give a special shout out to Mr. Rico Crawley. Um, I noticed that when I put up something on Facebook, he's right there on it. So I want to acknowledge him and say thank you, sir. My charge tonight is to bring to you a portion of something that I put together uh, back in 2010. In reality, I didn't know that I had what I had until I started putting it together. Some of these boards I put together back in 1996, but it wasn't considered a museum. It was just, I was just putting these boards together, and as you will see, as my beautiful queen fiance, she strolls through, and because um, I have two cameras going, uh, if you will. So the camera that you see me in close up. I'm standing in front, but the other camera you see almost all of me in the background of some of the pictures, that's my fiance uh, who is controlling that camera, um, fiance Queen Gwen. So moving forth, uh, as I was saying that this uh, museum, uh, I put it together and because of the space that I have, I was not able to put out everything that I would love to show you all. I put in the chat the name of the museum and just so you'll know just because this is February 28 days this museum is available to travel 365 days and trust me it can fill up an auditorium it could fill up a stadium well I'm gonna say a stadium but a lot of the stadium it could fill up school auditoriums. It could fill up the church overflow room. Um, I mean, this is a lot. So you figure 12 years and beyond of, of collecting, it becomes, I'm not going to say overwhelming because of the fact that I can load this stuff up in my, in my truck and uh, we're gone. Just before I get into it, when you talk about some of the pieces that are not here for visual, um, I have what is called the, the Michael Jordan collection. And I found out yesterday while displaying this, uh, there was a gentleman that was in the audience and he just started, you know, going online and looking up this stuff. And I got what is called the Jordan Gatorades. That's uh, five bottles that I collected back in 2009. Well, he looked it up and he said, Mr. Dowridge, you know those Gatorade bottles, that's $45. I was like, wow. When, the water, when Michael Jordan played with the Washington Wizards, I got the, um, the trading cards, packed, never opened. He said again, Mr. Dowridge, that's another $50. And take it for granted, back in the days, 2009, with the water bottles, I only paid like a dollar and something, a dollar and 39 cents for each bottle separately. Um, and the list goes on and on of the magnitude of financial uh, acquisition that I have going on here. I've even had people to come through and want to buy it right on the spot. And, and it's no, my intention with this museum is, you know, long after I'm gone, my prayers is that it will fall into the right hands and you know, uh, go on from there to educate and not go on to collect dust. So anyway, an eclipse of black history. What I'm talking about with you all tonight, I'm talking about some of the strides that we have made in this America since coming to these shores 
in the year of 1619. Correct me if I'm wrong. I do stand corrected if I make a mistake. From that point, we were, if you will, we were called out of our names, we were hung, we were beat, and we were destined to be a race of people that would never achieve anything in this country. I was looking at, um, and some of you all might have seen it, uh, CNN on Sunday night, they did a special on LBJ, uh, Lyndon Bean Johnson. And in a clip, you had George Wallace. George Wallace giving a speech in, in reference to the fact that we will never integrate with those Negroes because those Negroes are less than. And I can almost remember, and some of you all can as well, I can almost remember hearing uh, George Wallace giving that speech. And the mere fact of it is, is that no one was giving us a chance to prove that, you know, we were more than, and I'm going to go ahead on and say it, we were more than tar monkeys, we were more than um, uh, uh, people to be hung, we were more than uh, slaves, we were more than less than, and we were more than half a cent. As you know and as you read your history books, you understand and you know and you have the knowledge to understand that we as black folks, coming all through the history of this, all the way up to this current moment, 2022 February, that we have designed, we have invented, we have created, and we have dominated in certain areas besides sports, besides entertainment. And the other areas, those are the areas that they do not, they wish that we uh, do not get the knowledge of. So they come on with TikTok and where a lot of people are spending, a lot of our young people are spending a, a gross amount of time on TikTok um, delivering and disseminating uh, unneeded, unwarranted knowledge and it's going right down the tubes, if you will, instead of giving us knowledge. So, with that said, I won't take up much of your time speaking because I really didn't want to speak tonight, I just wanted to show. So, moving forward, alright, despite the phone ringing, okay, that's, a, that's, that's we're calling you all to make sure you all are on alert here, okay, and, and just to take a moment to recognize my good doctor as well, Dr. Leroy McKenzie. Ladies and gentlemen, I had this display set up yesterday at uh, what is called the detention center here in Tampa for young brothers. And it's amazing, one of the young brothers, when he came in, he said, Mr. Dowridge, I know you. And he came up to me and he hugged me. I'm going somewhere. And after we hugged each other, he stepped back and he said, well, Mr. Dowridge, I am sorry to inform you. And this brother's 17 years old. I am f sorry to inform you that I am looking at 30 years behind bars because of, of a crime called murder. After we spoke, I noticed he left and he walked and he walked in front of my good friend here, Malcolm X. When he walked in front of Malcolm X, I started schooling him on this brother because a lot of them were talking in reference to him getting assassinated on June 5th, 1965 at the Autobahn Ballroom in Harlem, New York. But I mentioned to him, yes, this man here, prior to becoming who we know as Malcolm X, prior to that, he was known as Detroit Red. He was out on the streets. He was a thug. He was a gangbanger. He was a, 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 a thief. The whole nine. But the, the, what I wanted to demonstrate and share with this young man, though this brother here started out as, he wound up as something even greater because of the fact that there was a role model that stepped before him and a role model that was brave enough, keyword here, brave enough to step before him and, and show him a direction. Even though at the end of the day, he wound up losing his life. So this is my uh, precious, if you will, Malcolm X uh, presentation, Malcolm X picture that 
I purchased, and believe it or not, for all of you in Baltimore, I hope you're ready for this, but I bought this at the flea market on K Caton Avenue in Baltimore. And I have some other prints in here that I purchased at the flea market on Caton Avenue in Baltimore, Maryland. I'm sure some of y'all, I see some of you are nodding your head, so you, you're familiar with the flea market on Caton Avenue. This piece here, this is called the, the Seniors. I was a host, I was uh, pulled in to be a host of a local cable show, which I forget the name of it. However, there was a young brother that I had on as a guest. And believe it or not, this young brother who was a guest, he worked at the time for NASA. But it wasn't about him working at NASA, it was about his work that he did as an artist. And believe it or not, this brother bought this print with him. I was not looking for this, but this brother gave me this print. And this is back in 1996. And I've had this print ever since, and I cherish this print with all my heart because of the fact that this is something this brother uh, did on his own. And he, and he drew this. And if you can see how eloquent it is, it is. Uh, and forgive me because I, I forgot the brother's name, but if you can look at how eloquent and the great job that he did. Moving on, this picture, this print here, which I purchased a couple of years ago, if you see all the characters in this print, you have Muhammad Ali, which we all know was the greatest, and I will say this, in 1963, some of you all remember, I was just seven years old, but in 1963, after knocking out Sonny Liston with the Phantom Punch, he jumped up on the top rope and he told the audience that I am pretty, I am the greatest, I am the champion. From that mere moment of 21 years old till the day that he left us. And even after he had the Parkinson's later on in life, you will attest that his family, his wife and his children, they took very good care of Muhammad Ali in the later stages of his life. Even though if you saw pictures of him, you very seldom saw Ali from here down. You mostly saw him here up. And they did that for a reason. Because of the fact that they wanted the world to see how pretty he still was and how well taken care of he was. And I will say, please understand, don't go there, but I will give him the credit. He was a very handsome man until his final days here on earth. So you have Muhammad Ali, you have Malcolm, you have, uh, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and I know it's not Harriet Tubman, but um, uh, the, uh, somebody help me out. And who I'm looking at is right here, this young lady here, this queen right here. Um, it's not Harriet Tubman, and I forget her name. Uh, oh, Truman. Anybody? The floor is open. If anybody can help me out, I'm having a 65 moment. But anyway. Uh, there you go. Thank you. Sojourner Truth. Thank you very much. Kudos. Okay. And of course we have uh, Marcus Garvey. We have uh, uh, President Barack Obama. And we have my namesake. I say my namesake, but I'm really his namesake. Uh, Frederick Douglass. Okay. Moving on. Oh, and I'm sorry. We have Mandela over in the corner. Moving on. We have in front of me we have Frederick Douglass. Now someone's probably thinking, and now wait a minute, that sure look like you, Mr. D. Well, that is me, uh, as Frederick Douglass. And, and believe it or not, um, as I mentioned last year, God is good because he, he inserted this inside of me and he gave me this charge. And in 2009, 2009, I moved forth 
and went to the theater. And um, matter of fact, it says, if you come down, it says the Strauss Theater, Tico Theater, here in Tampa. And we had an artist who drew this, more or less just put my face where Frederick's face would be. And these people that you see underneath, these are the people that we, these are, uh, if you will, Tampa's historian, historians. Some of them have gone, gone on. However, we recognized them on that night of February the 17th, uh, 2013. Moving on, and I'm, I'm going to move out of the way of the camera, so forgive me because I'm going to be moving here, um, if you will. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, we have a situation with our young black males. I was fortunate enough to, uh, in the back in the 90s, to give a workshop, and I put the, these boards together. Well, this board and this board over here. And these two boards, it says, young black men, young black males get help. Helping individuals to prosperity. Now, you got some stories on here, and these are actual stories. But going back to Tupac, Tupac Shakur, articles that I actually cut out the, the newspaper back then. And this is one of the articles that I, that I took out of the newspaper um, about Tupac upon his uh, assassination, if I can use this term. We all have mentors. Well, it, these are also are showing some of my mentors. And I don't know if you remember, if you can, if you can go here. I don't know if you remember back in the, in, in the 90s, I believe it was, there was a kid that made headlines. JJ, I don't know if that name rings a bell. JJ was a very young kid, maybe about 12, 13 years old, and he committed murder in Chicago. And the system was working with JJ. They let him out, and he went out, and he committed more to the, uh, uh, pain and agony on the society. So these are just some of the stories that I bring in hopes of showing our young brothers the difference that they can make in brothers who made a difference for them. If you can bring, come over here. I don't know if you all remember the Million Man March. Uh, I have original, this is original footage from the Million Man March. Alright. That took place Octo in October of 1995. The Million Man March, Take a Pledge. The Day of Atonement. I was not able to go, however, I was not able to travel to Washington, D.C. for this event, but I, I played hooky from work, and I sat on my couch, and I watched this event for two straight days. And though I was not there live, but it was an atonement in my heart. And it helped me as well as a black man to change and to become a better black man in my life and during my tenure here on earth. Um, moving on, if you can get now, we go to the entertainment side of this. Uh, we have the OJs, and uh, I see some of you all. You probably wasn't here during the time. You wasn't born yet. Uh, but this is a picture of the OJs while in Miami. I, I was I had traveled to Miami, and they were live in Miami. The Barge, Gladys Knight, and the Pips, a tribute to Whitney Houston, which. We are celebrating, we are in the midst, we just celebrated February the 12th, which marks, which marks 10 years of the demise of Whitney Houston. I also have in my, in my uh, museum, I have a collection, a huge collection, on Whitney Houston. I mean, Whitney Houston, Michael Jackson, etc. So, and if you will, if you can show this one. This picture right here, which I'm pointing at, that was at what is called the Black Heritage Festival that comes here every year. And matter of fact, it is in its 22nd year. It started in 2000. And I'm proud to let everyone know that I was one of the donators, original donators, to get the festival started and off the ground. The musicians that you see there, that is Confunction. I don't know if you remember the group Confunction, all right? 
Let's have some F-U-N-N. Fun. All right. I see you, Fran, jamming. All right. All right. Fran's starting to dance off of that. I ain't mad at you. Okay. We got Harold Melvin in the Blue Notes. We got the Isley Brothers. Uh, moving on. Ladies and gentlemen, we have um, the four little girls. I traveled to uh, Birmingham, Alabama back in the 90s, the late 90s. And here's the church that, they, that the KKK bombed. Down in this corner here, if you can see where my finger's at, this is where uh, the four little girls got blown up with the bomb from the KKK. Now, I will share with you that upon my visit, I went to Birmingham for a conference. Upon my visit, uh, I did go into the church. I got tons of pictures. And I'll never forget, while in this, this uh, room here, there was a deacon there, and I, was, and I was taking pictures, and the deacon said, Sir, you can't take pictures. I said, Okay. So what I did, I waited till he left. When he left, ladies and gentlemen, I will admit, I took a lot of pictures, and this is just one of the pictures with the four girls that I took. Moving on, of course, we got Marvin Gaye. Um, we also have... Uh, the Temptation Park. This is the Eddie Kendricks Park in Birmingham, Alabama. This guy over here, he's auditioning for a part in The Temptations here. This guy here. Um, moving on, of course we got President Barack Obama. We also have, ladies and gentlemen, over here we have, which I'm sure if you're in Baltimore, Maryland, you are familiar with it, it is the Blacks and Wax in Baltimore. And this Blacks and Wax is located on North Avenue. Um, North Avenue and North Carolina Street. And I do know that uh, the Blacks and Wax Museum is under construction as we speak. Now there's history there, uh, and it's personal history, because of the fact that, yes, I had a brick put there in front of the building, but more importantly, back in the 1960s, uh, in my third foster home, I lived around the corner. And this Blacks and Wax Museum, back in the days, it was known as a fire department. The fire department moved, and uh, when they moved, the Blacks and Wax moved in, Dr. Uh, Dr. Jones moved in, uh, and they renovated and made it into the Blacks and Wax. Moving up, I just got a note that somebody couldn't see anything, so I hope, if we can back up, alright, I don't know if you can see this print here, but this is a print taken of the slave ship. We all know what happened in Africa when unfortunately we were sold by us. It wasn't the white man that sold us, it was us who sold us. So I don't know if you can see this clearly. But this is the slave ship, and this is just one of the prints that I purchased a few years ago because I thought it was heart-wrenching, and I wanted to make sure that people got the opportunity to see and to use this as a motivation, especially us black males, use it as a motivation to spur forward knowing where we came from. And if you see right here, this is a light. On the, state, on the slave ship, allowing these great brothers of ours, these great kings of ours, to be able to see some type of light. Moving on, of course we got Muhammad Ali again. All right. Moving on, we have the greatest, and I love this piece here, because this is, and I don't know if you can see, maybe you might want to turn it to the side, let me see. Um, can it, yeah, can anybody, yeah, let me, let me, uh, okay, can anybody see this? This is Muhammad Ali and Michael Jordan, and the name of this print is The Greatest, and I just love how they put this together with these two brothers. Of course, Muhammad Ali, the greatest boxer, and Michael Jordan, the greatest basketball player. Moving on. This here, I don't know, I keep, I keep 
seeing what they have, they're saying they haven't seen anything. But uh, can you see it? I mean, can you see what I'm showing you? Anybody? Why don't you take this camera and show it down? Down. Why don't you use that? Because it, it's not on. It's not on. The, on the, Oh, the quality, okay. Celtics, 
At 85 years old, Mr. Russell has auctioned, auctioned off all of his wear. He said that he didn't want to leave here with the ownership. He wanted to put it in someone else's hands who probably could do better and keep the tradition going. I was just a child when this, this event occurred in 1968. The 1968 uh, Olympics. Tommy on the top rack there. He was a gold medalist. And as the story goes, once those two brothers raised those fists like they did, they were barred for almost 60 years. Last year, Tommy, they did, a, they did a documentary on him. I believe it was on PBS. The bus ride. We got Malcolm, just to name a few. Martin, uh, W.E.B. Du Bois, Frederick, um, Harriet Tubman, to name a few, and Recently, Maya Angelou. Question, do anybody know who these two gentlemen are? Here's the trivia. Do anybody know who these two gentlemen are? The floor is open. You're muted, Dempsey. Joe Lewis is one of them. Joe Lewis is one of them. And do you know who the other brother that is dressed so dapper? Olympics? Jesse Owens. Correct. There you go. Now we go to this brother here. This brother here is no other than Doug Williams. Doug Williams, who has a heck of a story because of the fact that, first of all, him and I, we used to hang out together while he was a Tampa Bay Buccaneer. But even more greater than that, one of the reasons that Tam uh, Doug Williams left Tampa is because of the fact that Former owner, Hugh Cloverhouse, would not pay him a measly $50,000 more so that he could take that $50,000 and save his wife's life. His wife died eventually of cancer. But the story gets even more greater. He wound up leaving the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and he went to the old USFL football league uh, the Arizona, I forget the name of the team. However, he wound up moving on to the Washington Redskins. There he was told, Doug, you will not start. However, Jay Strader, who was the white quarterback, got injured. Doug wound up starting. And when Doug started, he went and took him to the Super Bowl. I believe it was the second quarter. Doug twisted his leg. Doug came back. And Doug through five touchdowns. Doug wound up being the MVP of the game. But here's the downside. Usually when they ask the MVP, where are you going? They say, we're going, I'm going to Disney World. Well, because of the color.